to a new video. So I was currently going through the dynamic material instance tutorial that I was putting together and then editing. And what I thought I'd do is I'd split that video, um, not into two, but just take the back end of that video and make it its own, just so it's easier for those wanting to just do a damage HUD effect to find it a little bit easier. So it's not mixed up in different titles and it's a little bit more soon. So if you've watched the dynamic material instance video, the whole thing all the way through, this is the last portion of that video. Um, but if you haven't, what it is, is a we kind of set up a material dynamic, a dynamic material instance effect, which then gets applied to our VR hood. So over time, it causes damage. And then we can have this kind of damage effect bleed in from the sides of our screen and then display it to the player through the headset, uh, which we could see on there. So it works in VR and then we can kind of undo it. So the idea is that we're going to set up this material, or at least I already set the material up. I did that off the tutorial. So it kind of looks like this. So super simple. So you'll be able to just copy that down if you need to. But then we go through the, the logic of setting that up with the player and have it go from there. So when we jump in, it's just going to... Yeah, so it's going to enjoy this. And let me know what you think. If you want to get the files to this, they will be available through Patreon and YouTube members as normal. A big thank you and a big shout out to everyone over there, um, over at both places. If you've got any questions, make sure to head over to the Discord where I'll be able to help out when I'm in there pretty much almost every day. And then we can kind of go from there and then set it up. So yeah, let's jump on over and we'll get started. Actually, delete this now. Let's call this play damage. And then I'm going to go in and I'm just going to set up a very simple shader so we can actually have a kind of sphere radius around the player's camera. So if we take damage, we can actually fade that in and then fade it back out. Just to show you a different way of actually using this. Okay, so our back is a simple shader to act as like a damage effect. So it kind of squeezes into the screen and then away from it. So if I actually have this radius variable, I can actually change this to kind of hone that in. So if I go to a material instance that I created of this master material, you can see I can expose the radius variable and I can actually just kind of shrink that in. So the more damage you take, the closer it actually closes up. And all it is is a simple shader that uses a sphere gradient. So if I start previewing this, you can see that I have two power nodes, so I get different effects out of that. So a lower value gives me a softer edge. So actually, it's probably going to be do about five. You can see it actually softens up even more. And then 20 acts as like a, a very soft edge, so it fades further in. And then I use the noise. So in the noise, a simple noise is out, out of Unreal. I lerp those together onto each other. And that gives me this effect here, which I can then actually modify and then add together. So I add the high intensity with the low intensity, gives me this effect. And then what I can do is I can invert that mask. So I get this sort of like a, a reticule, which I plug into opacity. And then I just have my base color, which feeds in based on the gradient. So if I go to here, I could actually change this. Probably do, if I try this, you see I get different effects. We don't need the darker one. It would actually be fine. I'm trying to figure out which one would be a good distance. Do it that way, actually, and then that will give us a higher fall off. So if I save this, like it is, it's just about playing around with your shaders and then going from there. But if we undo it, you can see that we've got a dark effect. I could then go in here and then change this to be like a blue, and we get this cool, awesome effect, nebular effect, call it. But we can actually have this dark. So once it's on the player, it's gonna look a little bit better. And then we'll do a extremely dark red. So it fades into the center. Okay. And in this case, because we're only changing the radius, we're just gonna bring this into the screen. We only actually have to expose this variable here. So we can actually have it go out. And then that's why we've already got the radius up here on the left. So as it comes in, kind of fades in, and then you can have it go as far as you want. You'll probably have it capped out at probably about 0.5 or 0.4, but we can see that and then we can go from there. So in our player, if we want to use this, we can open up VR Horn, we can get our viewport, we can find our camera, 
it would place a plane, search for M underscore player damage. So I've got a material instance, but we're just going to use the M underscore player damage. Here you can see here that we've got that in the scene. Actually, I will use a material instance version because then I can actually control it a little bit easier just to start out. So point seven. It could be pretty high, actually. We could just put this up to one so we can't see it. But when we press play and we jump in, we don't see the material, or at least we shouldn't be able to once I'm in the scene. However, if I take that material instance and I bring it down and then we press play, we should still see it if I've set it up correctly. There's a child of the camera. It might be too close or just not at all. Okay. So the reason it wasn't showing up is because the plane has collision. So it's overlapping with the world and then it's kind of just breaking it. So I'm going to set this to no collision. So it spawns in and then I can move this closer to the camera. So now if I delete the one that I put into the level for testing, what I can do is I can actually open it up. We can jump in and I can actually see the effect as it's on the screen. So there is some areas where I could just move it closer. We don't want it too close, otherwise we'll start clipping the camera. But I've got it in there and then we can actually see it. So what I'm going to do is rather than set up a damage system because this video is already getting on in length, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and scale it up slightly and then set this variable to one so we can't actually see it. There will be some overdraw because it's a, a translucent material. You could go in there and set this to hidden once it equals one or zero, but I'm just doing this for a little bit of fun. So I thought I'd show you how to do it. Cool. So on begin plate, we're just going to do the exact same thing. We're going to get our plane and we're going to get material. So kind of covering up what we're already doing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create dynamic material instance and we'll do this at runtime. So create material instance during gameplay. Plug this in like so. And we'll say and material dynamic material instance underscore damage. And then we'll right click promote to a variable. So we've got that stored. So damage material and then we can set the material. So we go to plane, set material, plug that in like so with our object going to material. We only have one element on our plane, so it's only be element index zero. So it's B, set, and then we have. So now we need a way to just actually push that to the screen. So it's just, it's essentially just repeating what I did earlier, but with a cool shader effect. What we're gonna do is we're going to hit compile. And then we're going to get our damage material and we're going to say what would be a good way of doing it. So we would probably have this set up to our health system. So we could say some event, take damage, and then we could actually set a variable. So we could set texture parameter value. So we looked at doing the color earlier. So now we'll do the texture parameter value. So we can bring this in. Oh, so earlier on we did the vector parameter, but we're going to use a scalar now because we're only changing the one value. So we can just search for scalar or set scalar parameter value. And the parameter value that we're going to change in our material is called radius. And we can actually set that here. So in this case, you could imagine that you're taking damage. You're going to have a health float. So what we're doing, it's going to be health, health. And then we're going to have this as a float type. This will be public. We take this, we could get it. And we could say, okay, we're going to Look float, so look float, our value. You might have to do some stuff because it wouldn't typically go from zero to one, but we could say our B value, I think it's gonna be that way around. And then we could climb it at 0.3, let's say. So we can plug this in like so. So now when we take damage, it's gonna update our system. And our damage is just gonna be a variable as well. And it's just, we're just gonna do a timeline, keep it super simple because we do not have time to set up a full system. So play from start, I'm gonna play it and then update the damage. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this one set the same way. So track float variable one, I don't know why I didn't change. One length one, add key one, one. So now in the event graph, we could actually set that health variable. So I get set to update. So we'll do the update health before we take damage because that's why we would normally do it. And then plug that in like so. So now when we start, we'll do the we'll delay by two seconds, just to see which end of the spectrum it's on. And then when we press start, we should wait two seconds. And then you can see it actually fades in really fast. So that is the problem. Finished, 
we'll set the health value to zero. Update so it stops, sets that, and then the length, just so we can actually see it. We might have to increase this to about five. Normally you would have your variable change over time when you take damage, so it would increment anyway. But because we don't have that system, it's just a bit easier to set this up this way. Wait two seconds. Kind of just starts. It's a bit crazy. So I've messed probably this up. This. Try and wait 10 seconds to see if it comes through. Nothing happened. Two. Okay, so I've done a little bit of playing around. Same thing. I've just got the time. And then I've just played around with alert values to get something nice. And I'm pretty happy with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump in. We'll take a look. I want to show you what it currently looks like. So with it placed in front of the player, so as we're in the headset, it'll slowly fade in as we take damage over time. So you can see it actually goes around. And because it's wall space on the noise, it actually updates on the edges. You can't see it on the right hand side, but in the headset it covers my whole view. There's like a little tunnel window to see out of. So then I could fade that back out when I take health or something along those lines. The problem right now though, is it appears in front of our hands so if I move up our hands don't look like they've got blood on them or as it's the material is part of our eyes so what we could do is we go to M player damage can we search for depth and then disable depth test so as soon as we do this we can press start and then now what will happen is when we jump into our project and we actually start we can then move around we slowly start taking damage and it actually appears as though it's in front of our hands so on our eyes in the scene so you can play around with it quite a bit, do what you want. It's just a cool, fun little effect to cover dynamic material instances, and then also a damage screen. So what I might do is actually split this video, keep it all in one, but upload it twice with two different names, bit edited, so you can actually do the damage one by itself, and then go from there. But if you want to get access to the files, Patreon and YouTube members will be able to download this project uh, once the video goes live. And then you check this out, it is built in 5.4.4. So as long as you've got that version, you can build it there, or you can build it in any version of Unreal. All the logic I've done is through Christ uh, 4.2, below that, the first Unreal Engine. So keep that in mind. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to support the channel and see more cool videos like this, more in-depth ones like this, make sure to head over to Patreon YouTube members. Special thanks to everyone over there. I've got some new videos coming out soon. I've got a sponsor sending out a piece of hardware that I'm super excited to play around with, which I asked them for. So we've got that coming and then we can go from there. But yeah, all right. See you in the Discord. See you on Patreon. See you on YouTube members.